Hi there, I'm Rich Gordon, I'm a bagpiper. I've been playing bagpipes for 20 years now uh, and today I wanted to talk to you through what a bagpiper should do at a wedding. So the first thing the bagpiper should do is uh, stand at the entrance to the ceremony venue, which could be a church or it could be a hotel or it could be a registry office, um, and just simply play at the doorway whilst guests arrive. Um, this is usually about half an hour before the bride arrives. Um, and uh, as far as tunes go, um, really it's up to the bagpiper to choose what to play. Um, I would always recommend playing happy, upbeat tunes, uh, something that expresses the joy of the, of the occasion. The next thing a bagpiper can do, which really depends on the choice of the bride, is uh, perform as the bride arrives in her car. Now obviously this is entirely dependent on the location and the practicality of doing so, but I think it adds a nice touch uh, to be playing as the bride pulls up in the car and uh, you know gets her pictures taken by the photographer and so forth and as she prepares to actually enter the venue. In terms of tunes, this is uh, something that, that, that should be just a little bit more romantic um, tunes that work well here are things like um, Loch Lomond or Highland Cathedral, for example, or even Amazing Grace. Um, again, you know, if the bride has a particular choice, then uh, it's it's always a good thing to to get a recommendation. But otherwise, these are tunes that, that do work well for that occasion. So next up is, uh, this is an optional one, um, this is uh, all about piping the bride down to the altar. Now this is entirely dependent on both the, the venue and what the bride would like. Um, churches and places with a lot of echo inside, they aren't really that great for, for piping inside. Um, you know, they would end up being deafening. Um, and also, you know, the, the bride may already have some, some music selected that she would like to play as she goes down the aisle anyway. So, uh, really this one's entirely dependent on, on the bride's choice, but um, in some venues, like hotels, it's possible to, to, to play the bride down the aisle. You may not necessarily follow her down, uh, you may just come in through the, the, the door at the top and then kind of stand off to the side as the bride reaches the altar. Um, and again, good tunes choices for this are things like Highland Cathedral, Amazing Grace, um, or you know if the bride has a, a particular uh, choice. Another good one is actually is Dark Isle. Um, these are quite quite slow, romantic, ballady type songs, um, but they're obviously they're, they're full of emotion. So it really captures the uh, the emotion of the moment.
Next up uh, is another optional task and it's during the point where the bride and groom are signing the register immediately after the ceremony. Now again this depends on the suitability of the venue uh, and the choice of the bride and groom. If they've perhaps chosen music that they want to play uh, over the stereo system for instance. However it's not unheard of for, for pipers to perform during this part. Um, and usually good tune choices uh, are, you know, they're quite upbeat, they're quite jubilant. So things like When the Battle is Over or A Man's a Man for All That um, or even uh, something like Scotland the Brave, for example, you know, it's, it's full of pomp and ceremony and, and really gets people on their feet. The next task isn't really optional, um, it's when the bride and groom exit the, the ceremony venue as a man and wife for the first time. Um, what is optional about it is where the piper actually starts playing. Um, if the piper is indoors or at the back of the venue then it's common for the piper to lead the couple out um, to the front of the, uh, the venue and pipe as all the guests come out behind them. Um, but you know if it's a church or if it's somewhere that playing inside isn't that great then uh, it's usual just for the piper to stand outside um, and start playing as soon as he sees the bride and groom appear at the threshold of the door. Uh, so things that are definitely good for this are things like Mary's Wedding, um, When the Battle is Over, Scotland the Brave, all these kind of things again that they're really really nice and upbeat and you know they get people on their feet and, the, and you know people are really happy to see what's going on. The next task is performing during the, the photographs. Uh, I usually find that as soon as the bride and groom have left the, the ceremony and I'm piping all the guests out again, um, there's a period of maybe 10-20 minutes where everyone's kind of standing around mingling, chatting whilst the photographer's taking informal shots of the bride and groom in the crowd. Maybe they'll do a group shot, that kind of thing. It really depends on how the, uh, the photographer actually approaches the scheduling of the shoot. Uh, so it's at this point that I usually just perform a generic medley, again almost the same kind of medley as uh, when the guests are arriving at the ceremony itself. Um, and it's, it's nice to just to kind of play in the background. Uh, one of the things that, that can be difficult is uh, if the photographer is trying to communicate um, important information to the, the crowd and you know blasting away with the pipes over the top of them, it's difficult for them to be heard. So um, it's, it's important just to kind of play by ear at this one, uh, see what people would like to do and stuff.
Okay, the next task um, is usually the final task that a piper would perform on a wedding. Um, and it's all about piping the bride and groom to the top table at the meal. Um, I've done different versions of this. Uh, some venues choose to do it differently. Some people ask for different things. Um, so the, 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 the most basic version is, is when everyone else has been seated at their table in the, in the dining room. Um, the, uh, the wedding organizer will actually tell everyone to get up on their feet and, you know, please welcome Mr. and Mrs. Um, and then I will pipe them in, I will lead them down to the table. Um, sometimes uh, I will pipe the, the wedding party at the top table first, then come back for the bride and groom. Sometimes we'll actually stop at the cake uh, on, en route to the, uh, the top table, um, stop for photographs whilst they pretend to cut the cake, um, and then I'll lead them to the table again. But uh, what I always do when the bride and groom reach the table is I offer them a toast. Um, I usually have a little bit of whiskey in this quake, and uh, I'll stand in front of them. I'll hold the quake, and I'll say uh, in Scots Gaelic, Slanja agus bui gubra, which loosely translated means uh, health and good fortune to all. Um, it's a nice quick toast, but I think it adds a little bit of extra uh, magic to the day. Um, then obviously hold it up to the bride and the groom, toast everyone else in the room, drink it, and then I'll play myself on the way out again. In terms of tunes for this moment, um, again, this really depends on, on the choice of the bride and groom, if they have any, although the traditional piping to the table tune is Highland Laddie. Um, and then when it comes to piping back out again, I usually play Scotland the Brave because like, that gets everyone clapping and cheering. Mm -hmm.